So today we had uh, an interesting turn of events inside the Heroic Story mission. Uh, if you Harris, weren't aware, hey, can you hear us? the Lost Light Heroic Story mission Still of no the day, the Daily this Heroic Story, I should say, Harris. featured a side variant quest that would not only net you a 100% guaranteed exotic sniper rifle at 310, but it also had a chance to give you a pretty awesome Darth Vader style chip. Um, which, you know, is pretty much useless. You know, obviously, other than just cosmetically looking good when you're sitting in orbit. But uh, regardless, what you're going to want to do uh, the next time you see this, if it's still available, is go ahead and defeat the ogre without wiping. People can die, but don't wipe. Uh, we actually did uh, have a wipe, and the door was shut and told us that we were. Uh, just like we just missed them. So that didn't work out well. But on the other hand, uh, we did notice that the door was scannable inside the Hurl of Story mission. So what I'm thinking is, is that we should probably do a little bit of adventuring inside the next few Hurl of Story missions and see if there's not other hidden quests inside the game. I'm sure Bungie doesn't want us just to find them all that quick, but they'd probably be impressed if we did without cheating. Um, but anyways, you're going to go ahead and head through the first two locked doors after completing the Ogre uh, sequence. Uh, and when you get to the third door, you're going to go ahead and head out towards the Strike, okay? And it's going to be a fully formed Taken version of the Strike, which is pretty horrible. Um, as you can see, we were trying to just run through this because this is, you know, I've done this several times today to help people. And uh, my buddies had just gotten... Probably their second or third attempt at this, and had realized you know we got this down pat, and uh, you know the corresponding life scores were I was at 299, uh, my buddies are uh, ready was at 296 or 292, and uh, mod control was at 296, so the brothers were actually uh, quite undergeared for what most people were doing this with, and we beat this with over a minute and a half left. So I feel like we we did a pretty impressive. Uh, you know, run on this, and I was going to upload it and show you guys the strategy that we used to complete it very quickly um, while there's still some time left uh, for the till 5 a.m., obviously. So, um, you know, late, better late than never, but this shows you an exact perfect strategy on how to beat the 10-minute uh, strike and how to get yourself an exotic weapon and potentially a ship. As you can see, I'm getting slaughtered by knights, but we're we're right there with each other the entire time basically really you know trying we're in constant communication first of all we know exactly what's happening with everybody um and that's going to be key here uh, a, a lot of people are going to have trouble even with better gear if you're not you know in constant communication because the second a shield is down your whole team your whole fire team needs to react okay this is not like a nightfall right now this i would i would honestly say this this is up there with raid level content and it's pretty awesome but at the same time, if you play it tight, it's really not impossible for even 290 uh, item level or light uh, players. So don't don't be discouraged to try it. And definitely, when you go in there, be ready. Now, one of the things we did do is immediately after defeating the ogre, we immediately loaded up our heavy ammo so that our heavy ammo was on cooldown already before the 10-minute timer starts, okay? Now, again... As soon as the 10 minute timer starts, we're basically already unloaded our heavy ammo and we're going to go ahead and grab, you know, the next one out of reserves and load it up so that at the five minute mark, we can technically use our ammo again. Now, if we were lucky, we actually got the load before the thing and we'll get, you know, another one off at like a minute. Now, you'll see that I actually have heavy ammo at about a, like I'd say, two minute mark to finish it off. And I miss a whole bunch of them, but regardless of the misses that are absolutely horrendous, you'll notice that I'm capable of putting down these shields that are not matching and I'm capable of doing enough damage around the room to keep the scions in, uh, under control. Um, as well as having a warlock, uh, was it storm trance, storm caller, or something like that, storm singer, storm dancer, I don't know. Um, but in any event, the arcane Strange. warlock or I'm arc warlock is absolutely speaker. probably the most crucial thing in here. Uh, being able to clean the room really, really quickly. Um, now, another thing is the Blights. The Blights and the Scions will continuously respawn throughout the entire encounter. However, if you leave yourself with too many mobs that have shields, you'll never be able to complete it once you've completed the boss. So, 
constantly taking out those those ads that do not respawn is highly suggested while maintaining and killing the uh, respawning mobs as well. If you keep the blights down, you'll actually keep the scion spawns much lower, which will make this much more manageable for any player team. Okay. Now that's going to be key. Now I don't know, you know, if 285 area is going to be able to complete this, but I'd be sure that 288 probably could. Uh, not full 288, but a 288 and some 295 area people could probably do this with some struggling, but we'll be able to do it. Uh, and here is your first room. You'll see where they're actually uh, taking mobs everywhere. And as you can see, I'm sniping down the fire shield with the exotic sniper rifle that you get from doing this. And this is not my first rodeo. However, everybody else, on the other hand, did get their weapon. But we'll show you basically how to move through these rooms as fast as you can. Um, basically, I would say you really can't afford too many deaths at this point in, in here. You really want to be um, moving through here much quicker uh, than in other places. At the end, you don't have to be as quick, but you don't want to have too many deaths uh, at, at the same time. One or two people is okay, but you know, not having having two people down at the same time is horrible uh, for the game as well. Now, you'll notice uh, um, there are some changes, obviously. Like when we come down here, the left and right both spawn ads. And so, <laughs> you know, these, these mobs are easy. We just, you know, used up our rocks, boom, boom. Uh, as you can see, my, my sniper's loaded. Sniper's better than Galerhorn was at this point in the game, so... You know, make sure you got your snipers loaded. Make sure you have a good sniper, uh, preferably solar. Uh, this room is the longest room, quite honestly, other than the actual boss fight. Now, these snipers are going to be troublesome, and the witches are going to be troublesome. Ideally, the witches need to be go to go down really fast. Okay. Now, when the witches go down, uh, yeah, everybody needs to focus the shield. You know, whatever shield is down on the witch, they need to focus it and kill it immediately because these shades can get out of control. As you see, I'm handling one. Uh, pretty much all the time around me. Now, another thing is, is that if you can just push things into certain areas and know where they are, there's going to be a witch in the middle, a, a witch off to the le uh, left, and a witch inside the, the back tunnel room there. And the back tunnel room one will actually hide and like not show up on radar sometimes. So make sure you go in there and check for that witch. Again, these shades can be absolutely troublesome, and I would suggest you know handling the witches fast. I believe we have most of the witches down. And you'll actually see the mod control is going to be handling uh, a lot of the arc uh, damage. So things that need arc damage are going to be handled by mod control for the most part. I'm dam tanking the fire shields out specifically and using my rockets to basically crowd control. Uh, we are using the tethers to do damage. However, I'm not using a basic tether setup. I'm actually using the blood bombs so that they damage each other. Um, which makes us kill mobs much faster and, um, and I'm using black hole uh, or rather than black hole which is normally what I would say is better because it does allow you to tether more and very far away um, another su suggestion that I'm using is I'm actually using the predator or the shadow traps set up so that um, I don't have shade step or the keen scout uh, but the traps you know when they are great in this situation and you'll see why in a second now You'll see that we get lucky with some heavy drops here. We actually, I think we get multiple heavy drops um, before we go in. Um, right there, that captain can be troublesome. He's not really that bad. But right here, there's two knights, both fire shield. Uh, we set it up to where I would run in. Boom, boom, both shields down. Put a couple extra shots out. And now, you know, these guys are already down. We're ready to go. Yeah, as you can see there, a second heavy ammo drop, which is pretty much crucial. And makes this just absolutely lovely. Now I came in and opened up right away on Drivix, and uh, here you go. This is the strike, and you'll get to see right here what happens and how we handled it. Now do keep in mind that we are constantly communicating so that whenever anybody has died or whenever uh, a shielded mob is weak, everyone is switching to it and damaging it quickly. You can also see that we put a ton of damage into Drivix right away as soon as we got in there. Now we're also playing very risky because this is... Uh, as you can see, I went out there to get some stuff and got shot up in the air by one of these shield cabals uh, taking assholes. Um, but regardless, you can already see that they're already reacting. They already knew. Okay, so it's very crucial that you play and talk with your people. Okay. Um, now, as you can see, I'm taking out scions that are close to us as well as taking out the uh, blights because it's very important. 
Now I got that perfect tether right there. It's getting the one close to us. Uh, don't generate many orbs, but I got the courage of the pack on um, instead of generating orbs. And that is uh, my reasoning behind it is we already have an orb generating uh, hunter in here with me. So faster recovery and uh, ar more armor is <laughs> going to be ideal in this situation. Now, as you can see, uh, Re Reddy actually called it out there and let me know that he was going to die prior to dying. Okay, so now I'm already prepared to beat him up. And as you can see, I was like, no, I can't. I, this is just bad. I can't make it. And as you watch, the arc goes down. Boom. There's mod control handling the arc of death. So, you know, we had much less problems than most people because we really thought about it for a little bit. Um, I did it, like, the brutally hard way. Uh, and it was just crazy. But... You know, I'm rambling on now. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and watch the timer. You'll see this is probably one of the fastest, most undergeared runs uh, to happen today. Anyways, guys, it's been awesome. Thanks for watching. Taken will not rest. We'll claim every house. Consume every banner. You must stand guard.